Lead me up and let me stand My face on heaven's table land Well, love and joy and light abound Lord, plant my feet on high Everybody singing, Lord, lead me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land where love and joy and light abound. Lord, plant my feet on high. Sing that again. Lord, lead me up and let me stand. My faith on heaven stable land. Well, love and joy and light abound. Lord, plant my feet on high. Stands the one I'm pressing on. Be a poor way. You hide something in every day, still praying as I award bound. Lord, plant my feet on high ground. Lead me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land well love and joy and light abound Lord plant my feet on Ground. My heart has no desire to stay where doubts arise and fears dismay. Though some may dwell where these are bound. Lord, plant and tame is higher ground. Lord, lead me up and let me stand my face on heaven's table land. Well, love and joy and light abound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Beyond the mist, I fain would rise to raise me. On clouded skies, over storm oil pieces found by those who dwell on high
Just scale the utmost height, the rough away, and had the fight. My son, while climbing, shall resound. Lord, lead me to me up and let me stand by faith on the heaven's table land where love and joy and light abound Lord lead me to stand by faith on heaven's table land where love and joy and light abound Lord plant my feet on higher ground Lead me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land where love and joy and light abound. Lord, plant my feet on Lord, lift me up. Lord, lift me up. Lord, lift me up.
Lord, lift me up. I want you to open your mouth and pray to the Lord this coming year, higher ground, greater territory, greater power, greater authority, greater accomplishment, higher ground, higher ground, spiritually, higher ground. In your family, higher ground. Your profession, higher ground. In obedience to the Lord, higher ground. In spiritual, supernatural strength, higher ground. In holiness, Sanctification, higher ground. In evangelism, so winning, higher ground. In victory over temptation, higher ground. In prayer, fervent prayer, praying without ceasing, higher ground, right attitude towards God, praising the Lord always, higher ground. Setting the priority of your life. Living according to the word of God. Going only God's direction. Higher ground. Unity in the church. Unity with the brethren. Agreement. One accord. Higher ground. In the proclamation of the transforming gospel, higher ground, more than you ever did, more than you ever did, higher, higher commitment to the Great Commission, higher commitment in serving the Lord. Higher, higher submission, the success, the promotion, the prosperity, in the provision of the Lord for you and your family, higher ground. In being watchful and wise. So you don't plunge yourself in preventable tragedy. Higher ground, higher wisdom. Higher courage. Higher. That in the new year you'll not be as you were in the old year. In 
your love towards God, higher ground. Your love for saints, for the believers, higher ground. In your love to reach out to sinners and bring them into the kingdom, higher ground. In overcoming all the influence of Sodom, higher ground. Your ability to say no to all the influence of Sodom, higher ground. Your Pentecostal experience. Higher ground. Tell the Lord to help you seek his face, seek his grace, ask the Lord to help you empower you closer with power and give you the victory in every situation the tempters will come the temptresses will come to weaken your resolve weaken your conviction by telling the Lord, Lord, lead me up and let me stand. By faith on heaven's table land, by love and joy and light abound. Lord, lead me on unto higher ground. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us to the conclusion of this retreat. Thank you, Lord, because you are the God of power and a God of all possibilities. And you grant power and faith and courage and boldness and fearlessness to your people. And Lord, we pray at this time that your power will still come into everyone so that, Lord, whatever we face in the coming days, whatever we face in the coming year, Lord, the power to overcome, you grant to everyone in Jesus' name. Yeah. We pray, Lord, our mind will be centered on your word. Our eyes will be looking on you. Our hearts will be meditating on your word. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Lord, we know we're going to overcome in every challenge and every difficulty in Jesus' name. Temptations will come. Trials will come. Troubles will come. Persecution will come. Lord, because we know everyone that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And therefore, Lord, we pray in times of persecution, in times of pain and pressure, in times of trials and temptation, the power to stand solidly upon your word, your grant to every one of us in Jesus' name. That, Lord, every day and every moment, it will be for us to glorify your name. We pray, Lord, as you lead us into this message now, the power to go forth and to go out and evangelize all around us. You grant to everyone in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered already. And all we need to be able to do, everything we need to do, you'll grant unto us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. 
We thank the Lord who has brought us to the conclusion now of this retreat. And we thank him because of what he has emphasized to us. That here we are on earth, pilgrims on our way to heaven. And as we're walking along, there'll be detractors and tempters that will not want us to get to the edge of the journey. That's why the Lord has brought us together here so that it will equip us and it will prepare us. It will empower us so that all the power we need, all the strength we need, all the ability we need, all the skill we need, not just to do something within a few hours or a few days, but to walk confidently, courageously, and fearlessly and boldly in the kingdom and walking all through life victoriously. That's why he brought us here. And I believe he has strengthened us already. And the strength of the Lord will never fail in your life in Jesus' name. He has empowered us. Power for the present hour. Every day of our lives, we're going to keep on experiencing that power in Jesus' name. We will not fail. We will not fall. Because the power of the Lord will hold us up in Jesus' name. Now he wants us to go out and do exploits. Exploits through Pentecostal witness. Before Jesus left his disciples, here is what he gave them Mark chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 15, it says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to how many? Every creature. The Lord Jesus Christ led a great commission. And he says, This is the great assignment I'm giving you. I have died, I'm going to now go to heaven. He's died for the world already. He shared his blood, but he said, everybody must know about this for their salvation. Everybody around you, everybody in your community, everybody in your state, everybody in your region, everybody in the nation, everybody everywhere. So he said, go ye into all the world and do what? Tell me out loud and preach the gospel to every creature. It says, proclaim that gospel, announce that gospel, spread that gospel, tell everybody around you in your world that Jesus Christ died for the sinner. Tell everybody around you that Jesus Christ is the Savior and he is the only Savior. Go ye therefore, it all the world is said and preach the gospel to every creature the gospel is the good news the good news of salvation the good news of the grace of god the good news of the love of god that god loves everyone and is not willing that anybody should perish tell everyone say that to everyone preach that to everyone emphasize that to everyone the number one thing you ought to do if you're not able to do any other thing this is the number one thing a believer, a child of God is supposed to do. Telling the gospel, preaching the gospel, proclaiming the good news of salvation and the good news of the mercy of God, of the love of God unto everyone around you. And he said, go. That word go is a verb, a word of action. Not just you see it in church or worshiping in church. Or singing in the church, or praying in the church, or doing maintenance in the church, go. Go to the people out there, the people in the world, the people who are sinners, the people that need to hear of the word of salvation. And then it says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. I pray that our people will not be damned. Your relatives will not be damned. Your friends will not be damned. Even your enemies will not be damned. That's why it says, if they're not going to experience damnation, 
if they are not going to perish already the love of god is manifested in sending jesus christ to die for us and now the responsibility is for you to go and tell them and go and tell everyone around and then he says in verse 17 and these signs shall follow them that believe now signs don't follow people who are just sitting somewhere it follows people on the go who are following people on the move the people who are taking the gospel and taking it everywhere those are the people that the power the anointing the gifts of the spirit and the manifestation of supernatural power will follow and then it says this sign shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils and then he goes on to say they shall speak with new tongues and they shall take up serpents and it shall not hurt them if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them it says they shall lay their hands on the sick what will happen what will happen now you need to pay attention i've been emphasizing coming back to the bible coming back to the bible it says they shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall do what recover it doesn't say only the pastor will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover they all the preachers all the people who are going forth all the believers who are going forth for the good news who are going forth with the transforming gospel we are the people not just one man the days of just one man show the days of just a soloist all that is gone everybody as we rise up in the power of the lord and in the strength in the might of the spirit of god it says they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover and you know sometimes uh, even though we read that in the bible when it comes to the practice then we contradict ourselves that's why i told you i said now everybody is going everybody is preaching everybody is going to take the gospel everywhere every sunday now when we finish the service at the end of the service whether it's combined service or it's your local service in your district in your group anywhere the moment we finish we go into the world to preach the gospel to every creature i want to see the pastor we've seen enough of the pastor now if you're sick tell the brother around you i have this problem can you lay hands on me you will recover i said you will recover we don't have to wait for some special people now appointed people anointed people the pastor or this one or that one they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover and then it says so then after the lord had spoken unto them he was received up into heaven and at the right he sat at the right hand of god and they and he did what and they did what and they did what tell me out loud everybody they went forth that's you know obedience that's what the lord is saying he says we must obey obey it is when we obey the word of god then the signs will follow us and as we're finishing here today this is not the end this is the beginning beginning of spiritual activity and beginning of going forth everywhere so that as you go as you go as you go as you as everybody goes then the preaching of the gospel is taking place everywhere and many people are coming to know the lord in jesus name and they went forth and they preached where did they preach where did they preach everywhere the lord walking with them the people that are going to see the lord walking with them in pentecostal power in pentecostal supernatural anointing they are the people that go forth they went forth and they preached everywhere the lord walking with them with signs following confirming the word there's an amen there that is left for you where are you amen we're looking at chapter 24 of luke luke chapter 24 i'm reading from verse 45 then luke chapter 24 verse 45 then open he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures i pray that as we're going through all these verses of scripture the lord will open your understanding in jesus name 
you know, the tragedy of people that come to a retreat like this, and the Lord is revealing to us his word, but then they, they, they're still in the past. And while the future is coming on, while the Lord is leading us to something new, something higher, something greater, they're still bound in the past, and they allow their past to destroy their future. Listen to me. They allow their past to to destroy their future but in the case of these disciples the lord opened their eyes opened their minds opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and as we understand the scriptures we're moving on i said we're moving on and then it says and said unto them thus it is reaching and thus they behold christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at jerusalem and ye are witnesses of these things ye are witnesses of these things then he said in verse 49 he said and behold i send the promise of my father upon you but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endured with power from on high. And that power is to preach. That power is not just for you to sit at home. I've got the power. I've got the Holy Ghost. I've got this. I've got that. It's the power to be a witness, an effective witness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Acts of the Apostles chapter 5. Acts of the Apostles chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 29. Acts chapter 5, verse 29. As we go, there are people that will attempt to shut you up. There are people that will attempt to close the door. There are people that will attempt to stop you where you are. And then that's the time you need to bring out the strength you have, the power you have, and the, de and the decision and the courage of conviction that you have that this is your very life. Anybody trying to take preaching away from you, it's already taking your life away. It's the very center of your life, and it's the focus of your life, and it is the only thing you are living for, to preach the gospel. This is what the Lord has given us. All the other things we're doing, he has not commanded us to do them. Let me remind you again. We do many things in the church, they are wonderful. Many things in the church, they are wonderful. But you know, sometimes... We emphasize and we focus on the thing the Lord has not commanded us to do. And then we abandon the things he has told us to do. I told you during the retreat that he has not commanded us to sing, to raise up a choir, to raise up an orchestra. But a church that loves music like we do, we emphasize the singing and the orchestra more than the preaching of the word of god and once we want to come back to the bible that hey evangelism is the number one thing he has commanded us he told us to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature if there's time for singing we'll sing and the apostles will sing first and the preachers will sing first because it is the singing of the apostle no no instrument nothing because i read it to you in the bible in philippi paul and silas sang and there was no instrument and the power came from heaven as we're coming back to the bible there's some people that you know they say we don't love the church anymore they don't want anything anymore they are going back home and they are sad and all that because we're saying look at what jesus said evangelism is the number one thing and all the other things we're doing if they support evangelism great if they are going to hinder the preaching of the word, we're going to push them aside and throw them away. That's why I'm bringing you back to the word. We're going to go back to the word. I said we're going to go back to the word. And I told you there are people while we're going back to the world that will stand in our way and say, no, you will not go. No, you will not go. You will. That thing we want, bring it. What Jesus wants, take that away. What we want, do that. And we're seeing here that what Jesus Christ has commanded will be number one in this church. Give me a good amen. amen. And I'm saying this for headquarters church. I'm saying this for all the regions in Nigeria. I'm saying this for all the local churches in Nigeria. I'm saying this for all the churches all over Africa. 
the people who are in this church, if you're a member of the church, you come for the word. The word is going to be number one. Whatever else we do, if it cancels evangelism, if it cancels church planting, if it cancels the great commission, we're going to say no to you. We're going to say no to all those things. You better just make up your mind. If you're going to worship in this church, if you're going to remain in this church, we're going to join hands and hearts together. And we're going to do what the Lord has commanded us to do. That's how we started. When we started in our retreats, we need to emphasize all these other things. Our emphasis was you come into the retreat, you hear the word of God, and then you move on. You want to obey the word of God. We're coming back to that in Jesus' name. I said we're coming back to that in Jesus' name. Brothers and sisters, listen, I'm serious now. Anyone, preacher, anyone, overseer, anyone, pastor, anyone, coordinator, that will contradict the word of God, two cannot work together except they be agreed. If I discover that you support something that you will cancel evangelism, whoever you are, I'll just tell you, we cannot work together except we're agreed. And this is what the Lord has given us. And so, if you love me, and you love Christ, and you love the Bible, you love the church, and you love the people of the world who are, who are perishing, will come into agreement together. The same thing with the members of the choir. The same thing with the orchestra. We're not idolizing anybody. If you love the church, if you love Christ, if you love the Great Commission, if you love what we're saying, if you put your singing under the preaching of the word, and you make your singing to support the preaching of the word, we'll work together. They were in agreement. When I tell you stop singing, let's go and evangelize, you stop. We're in agreement. When I say, okay, sing only for two minutes because we want to preach for two hours, and then you do that. Once we're in agreement, then we'll go together. If you say no, we want to do our own will, I'll say no, sir, no, madam. We'll sit down and let us emphasize the same thing together. And I'm calling on the whole church to support the word of Christ and to support where your pastor stands. God has given you a pastor. He appointed me to be your pastor. And I'm your father in the Lord, and God gives me the word. I give it to you, and you say, yes, amen. We're in agreement together. Can I have your amen? amen. Witnessing, doing the work of the Lord. That's what the Lord has given us. And in the whole nation of our churches, we're going back to the word of God. In all the countries of Africa, we're going back to the word of God. In Europe, America, everywhere, we're going back to the word of God. Look at this. They try to stop them. They try to shut them up. And people still try to do that today, that day, that time, because the apostles have the power. The power to do what God had called them to do. And we have the same power here today. I said we have the same power here today. We're going to keep on standing whatever challenges we may have in Jesus' name. Look at Acts of the Apostle chapter 5. Acts chapter 5, I'm reading to you from verse 27. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we strictly command you that you should not teach in this name? That's what we are living for. That's the only thing we're supposed to do. And then they commanded them, they said, We told you, don't preach in this name. And then it says, But now, behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and, and intend to break this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than tell me man we're going to say that together we ought to obey god rather than men can you say that with me we ought to obey god rather than men we ought to obey god rather than men say that aloud 
And I'm saying that Jesus commanded go and preach. He didn't command go and sing. And I'm saying that Jesus commanded preach the gospel to every creature. Don't just stay in a local church and then doing all the merry-go-round and saying the same thing a thousand times to the same people. He said, go to new people, go to your neighbors, go to your community and go everywhere and preach. And then there are some people, they are setting us back and they are, they are kind of really clean us. They are saying church planting, church planting. They want church everywhere. Church over here and church over here. This new kind of thing that is coming. All those people are enemies of the gospel. But the people that are united together with Christ, they are saying, yes, that's what God said. If we have to abandon every other thing, if we have to push aside every other thing, this is what to do and this is what our lives are meant for that's why the apostle said you cannot tell us not to teach and not to preach and not to evangelize and not to win souls christ died and he gave us the good news go tell everybody and then they said we ought to obey god rather than rather than men and that is what we're all saying that is what you are saying i said that is what you are saying and as we go out, we're going to do it in Jesus' name. Evangelism will be a focus. Reaching out to perishing souls will be a focus. That is what we gave our lives for. And that is what Christ has commanded us. We're going to do it in Jesus' name. And when we do it in the way he wants us to do it, and then we listen, emphasis on things that Christ has not commanded, and we exalt we lift up what Jesus Christ has commanded. Exploits, supernatural power, miracle signs and wonders will follow us in Jesus' name. And you know the people that are asking for miracles, you know, this will happen, this will happen. They will not happen except we concentrate on what Christ has given that power. The power to do miracles, what he has given it for. We're talking about exploits through daily but, but Pentecostal witness every day. It's not just you just do one day, one Saturday or one Sunday, and then you forget all about it. It's every day. Daily Pentecostal witness. I'm coming to you. Three points. Number one, the call. Number two, the concourse. And number three, the comforter. Number one, the call to daily persuasive witness. The call to daily persuasive witness the call that's the commandment that's the commission that's the call he has given us and it says the call to daily persuasive witness number two the concourse with divine prevailing weapon we have the weapon in our hand we have the instrument in our hand we have the tool in our hand and he has given us this weapon it's divine and it makes us more than conquerors the conquerors with divine prevailing weapon number three the comforter and his penetrating wisdom the comforter and the penetrating wisdom of the comforter of the spirit not the wisdom of man that cannot obey God, but the wisdom of the Spirit Himself, the Comforter, and His penetrating wisdom. Number one, the call to daily persuasive witness. We're looking at Acts chapter 1 again. Acts chapter 1. We're looking at verse 8. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But it shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me witnesses not unto yourself witnesses not unto your denomination witnesses not unto your friends witnesses not unto your own personal opinion but witnesses unto christ what does that mean that jesus christ died on the cross of calvary that he died to save sinners and that his will his desire his passion is to have the whole of the world to be saved he is not willing that anybody should perish but that all should come to repentance go and 
give a witness to that that Jesus Christ so loved us he died for the world and give a witness to that that God in heaven does not want to judge anyone to go to hell he wants everybody to repent and to turn unto the Lord go and give a witness unto that that there's no other name whereby we must be saved it is only Jesus that brings the salvation go and bring a witness to that he says shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and then you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto that Thomas part of the earth look at that word both it also say first in Jerusalem when you finish in Jerusalem then go to Samir Judea when you finish in Judea then you go to Samaria then when you finish in Samaria then the uttermost part of the earth they are ready no it says he was telling not just one man not just one man he was telling every one of them he said you are going to receive the power how many of them receive the power on the day of Pentecost how many people tell me out loud 120 and all the 120 people that got that power he said you'll be witnesses unto me why do we leave the work to one peter why do we leave the work to one john why do we leave the work to one jesus that he is the one to run here to go to jerusalem and then samaria and then judea and then to the uttermost part of the earth and then i have all these uh, making calls from that country uh, pastor you have not visited us we're expecting you then the state is calling pastor uh, we have not uh, seen you for some time we're expecting you and then us is calling we have, pastor what's happening what have we done we're expecting you and then uk is calling pastor we're waiting where you children to where we're, we're waiting for you why are you waiting for me when he gave the commission to everybody and i'm the one to go to jerusalem and the one to go to judea and the one to go to samaria and the one to go to other most part of it when all these thousands of people are there what are we doing that we leave only one man to do the work of ten thousand people how can that be done that's a load nobody can carry but when you go over there you go over there you go over there drop your violin you go over there drop your trumpet and go over there drop your keyboard and go over there and drop whatever is your hand go over there and then all the force together that have the power and the anointing and then we go to jerusalem and judea and samaria uttermost part of the earth this world will know the lord jesus christ in a very short time it will happen i said it will happen and that's the reason why the lord is saying everybody should go you know sometimes when when you know we make some alterations and some changes there are some people that are sitting back there and uh, instead of praying for us that god will help us to do more of this i told you recently i said now all the video crusades were going to stop do you remember i said do you remember why did i say that because you know the video is just me you know have a crusade there and then we have something over there and then we're showing the video to the people film show film show and then the only the gs can talk only the gs can preach and the lord said it is not video it's not gs alone everybody everybody ye shall be witnesses unto me and when i read that in the bible i said now video crusade we're going to suspend that the brother there the sister there the youth there the one there in your community set your microphone and set all your gadgets and all your instruments and come on there and then preach the word and as you preach the word the lord will answer by fire from heaven and many people come under conviction and they're going to be saved in jesus name you know you know you know what people you know what people are thinking and you know how many people they are coming to they say pastor praise the lord pastor praise i said why are you praising the lord before i praise the lord would you tell me what are you praising the lord about they say you know this 24 by 7 now it releases everybody now nobody can give any excuse now that they are not hearing the gospel and you know every day every day you you are preaching the gospel i have you in my city room and in my city room you are there and i say pastor welcome and then I see the pastor like this I'm hearing the word of God and I'm saying oh praise the Lord for 24 by 7 I'm telling you if 24 by 7 replaces you that's not the will of God maybe one day will come if you're not doing your duty 
If you're not trying, sin all. And taking the gospel everywhere. And it's 24 by 7. That is making you to sit down. To disobey the Lord. And to disobey the great commission. Maybe one day we'll come. We'll just take the 24 by 7 away. And say the power is not the 24 by 7. The power is in you. The power is not in technology. The power is in you. And it says rise up. I'm afraid for this church. That whenever something comes in. It replaces the human being. It replaces the power. God does not anoint machine. God does not pour the Holy Ghost on all those wires. He pours the Holy Ghost upon the man, upon the woman, and the early church. Without technology, without 24 by 7, without anything, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We are the people to go. Don't transfer your responsibility to technology. You do it, you do it, you do it, I do it, and then we do it all together. The Lord is going to reach out to many souls in Jesus' name. It will happen. I said it will happen. That is the call. The call is not to technology. The call is to you. The call is to you. The call is to the call is to everyone. And the Lord is saying that if we're going to get the job done, it must be done in the proper way. And then we will have the Holy Ghost and the power of the Lord upon us. We have in the power of the Holy Ghost. We reach out. And as we reach out, the Lord will bless the people and save the people in Jesus' name. Acts of the Apostle chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. It tells us in verse 42. Acts chapter 5 verse 42. It says, and daily, every day, every day, and daily in the temple and in every house, they cease not they, not just one man, they, not just one leader, they, not just one pastor, they, not just one cheers. It says, they cease not to teach and to preach Jesus Christ. Is telling us then that this commission and this call and this commandment had been given to every one of us and the early church. This is what they did. They rose up in the strength of the Lord, in the power of the Holy Ghost. And they did what they ought to do. We're going to do it in Jesus' name. Whatever it is you're doing that replaces this commission and you're giving an excuse and saying, because I'm doing this, I'm doing this, which the Lord has not commanded. They're good things, they're good things, they're good things. But the Lord has not commanded them. And then the better thing, the higher thing, the greater thing that the Lord has commanded. If we're not doing it, then that's not the will of God. And he's not talking to people who say they are workers. Not workers, every member of the church, everybody. When we say, did you go for evangelism? Ah, sir, I'm not a worker. What do you mean? Did you join the people to reach out in the strength of the Lord? I'm not a worker. I'm asking, what do you mean by that? All the 120 people in the early church that waited in the upper room, not just workers. Those were the people that saw Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And then they all received the Holy Ghost and then they were the witnesses. And they are the day here, they, every house. Every place they were, they preach the word of God. It, it has come to your turn. You will do it. I said you will do it. Look at Acts chapter 8 verse 4. Acts chapter 8 verse 4. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. They that were scattered abroad. All the believers in Jerusalem, when persecution came, they were the people, anywhere they went, they didn't say, Apostle is not here, Evangelist is not here, the prophet is not here, and the pastor is not here, the teacher is not here, there's nothing we can do. You know, there are some people, they go to a particular place, and there's no deeper life there, and they just, they just fold their hands fold their hands and then anytime then they write all they know is to write letter they say uh, gs pastor i'm over here there's no deeper life that you are there who are you are you not deeper life why don't you start something send us a pastor 
Are you are there? Are you not the pastor there? Send us a soul winner. Are you are there? Are you not the soul winner there? I we want deeper life to start in this place. We're only about seven, eight people here. Send us somebody to lead us. Are you not a leader there among you seven people? Can't you start something over there? Philip alone went to Samaria as the persecution drove everybody away. And when Philip got there, there's no partner. There was no choir, there was no singer, there was no usher, there was no supporter, there was no prayer warrior. This man alone, Philip, because of the Spirit of God that he had, he didn't send to Jerusalem, send us somebody. Oh, you are, you are the somebody there. Why don't you read the scriptures all over again and understand that this is the great commission the Lord has given to us anywhere we are now, church will start there. I said anywhere we are in our church, we'll start there. You are in the village over there, start something. You are in the city over there, start something. And then after Philip started, he then sent to Jerusalem, not to come and evangelize, but to just tell them, give them information. There's a great revival over here. And then they sent Peter and John, and then they were able to do the rest. The Lord has given us the calling. And we're going to fulfill the calling in Jesus' name. Number two, concross with divine prevailing weapon. Concross with divine prevailing weapon. We're going to conquer. I said we're going to conquer. Where those concross, we're looking at Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. It says, Nay, in all these things, we are more than concross through Christ, through him that loved us. You know, Paul was the one that wrote this. He didn't say, and through all this, in all this, I am more than, con than a conqueror. He's talking about we. It's the whole church. Everyone that names the name of Christ. Everyone that has the power of the Holy Ghost. Everyone that has that anointing. We are more than conquerors through Christ who has loved, who loved us. Did he love only the apostles? Yes or no? Did he love only the apostles? Yes or no? No. Did he love only the men? Yes or no? No. Did he love only the special people, selected people? Yes or no? No. He loved everyone. Everyone that came into the kingdom. Because he so loved the church, he gave himself for the church. It's the whole church. And he said, all the people that he loves, he has made us more than conquerors and he puts a weapon in our hand that weapon will do wonders in jesus name am i the only one that believes the word of god he has said that weapon that weapon the lord has put in your hand and in my hand and our hands together the weapons will do wonders in jesus name let's look at this the weapon he has given us in second corinthians chapter 10 Second Corinthians chapter 10. I'm reading from verses 4 and 5. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty, through God to the pulling down of strongholds. The weapon he has given us, any village we'll go, we go, we're going to pull down the strongholds. Any community we go, we're going to pull down the strongholds in Jesus' name. There is no fear in our heart, no timidity in our life. That, you know, we cannot preach the gospel there. We cannot go over here. We cannot go over here. Everywhere you go, every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon. The Lord will give you that place in Jesus' name. Because the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. They are mighty. A mighty throw the Lord himself casting our imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. The time has come. I said the time has come. You will do it in Jesus' name. First John chapter 4 verse 4. First John chapter 4 verse 4. This is for you. This is for me. This is for everybody. The weapon of our warfare that makes us more than conquerors on the field as we go and preach the gospel, as we go and emphasize what the Lord himself, what he has emphasized. First John chapter 4 verse 4. Ye of God, little children, and have overcome them. We have overcome. I said we have overcome. I have overcome. 
I have overcome. Not because I am pastor, but because of the word of God. Because of the promise. Because of what Jesus has done. Because of the Holy Ghost that abides within me. And the same thing you have. You have the name of Jesus. I have the name of Jesus. You have the promise of God. I have the promise of God. And you have the blood of Jesus. I have the blood of Jesus. You have the Holy Ghost abiding in your life. I have the Holy Ghost abiding in my life. Because of that Holy Ghost. Because of that blood of the Lamb. Because of that name of Jesus. Above every other name. Because of that you will overcome. It says, ye are of God, little children, not only apostles, not only preachers, not only pastors, everyone, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You will overcome. It's in First John chapter 2 verse 14. First John chapter 2 verse 14. It says, I have written unto you fathers because you have known him. That is from the beginning. I have written unto you young men because you are strong. I have written unto you young men because you are strong. How did they become strong? And the word of God abides in you. The word of God that you have heard. The word of power. The word of his promise and the word of his prophetic utterance that you have had, that word abides in you. And it says, because that abides in you, you are strong and you have overcome. In that verse 14, and ye have overcome the wicked one. Thank God, as you go away today and you go to many places and you are preaching the word, you will overcome in Jesus' name. Now, when will you start doing what the Lord has commanded us to do? This evangelism we're talking about, and this uh, preaching the gospel everywhere we're talking about, when are we going to start? You in particular now, when are you going to start? You know, many people, they say, oh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I'm going to tell you something. You know, sometimes when we come to all this meeting, I'm already thinking in myself. I said, now we're in this retreat. From, you know, that day we started until this time. Then we finished today, 31st again, deeper like people, they want another meeting again. And then all the whole of January, deeper like people, they want covenant Sundays again. And then eh, all they want is just meeting, meeting. And then February, you say, hey, Pastor, what are we doing again? You know, January is gone now. I said, but January, we had covenant, eh, all these covenant Sundays. Well, eh, give us something. Okay, we have another program in eh, February. March, what are we going to do now? All the workers come together, come together. We are preparing for April retreat. April is there. Then there's another meeting again. And then May, Pastor, we have not done workers conference, workers retreat. Then I'm saying deep and lie. If we're learning and learning and learning December and January and February and March and April and May, a conference, conference, and then June is as June has come, Pastor. I about crusade, I about citywide crusade, I about Africa wide crusade, and then I start again. I get up and then Africa wide crusade. Now July has come. What are we going to do in July? Campus people they are preparing and they're saying conference, conference, August or September, and say and this and the you the you know success time for you. Then we have conference, conference, September. What are we going to do? Our women are saying our conference our conference and then we're now in september workers retreat again october there is a deliverance a celebration for independence and then november there's a planning meeting december again there's a conference and i'm saying deeper lie conference 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 when are we going to make use of all the things we're learning in the conferences and the retreats and ours will now say slash down these conferences slash down all these retreats and whatever we have learned whatever we have got go out there and do something with what you have got now we have come to this retreat are we going to just put all our notes by all the things we have got by and then we are waiting for another retreat another conference when are we going to begin to use what we have learned to this power for the present hour when is it anybody telling me shout it out loud Will you do that? I said, will you do that? I said, will you do that? 
everything that we have got, all the knowledge we have got, it just, instead of just piling up knowledge and piling up knowledge and conference upon conference, and it is one man that we expect to hold all the conferences. Somebody was talking to me before the retreat, said, Pastor, where are you? I said, I'm in, you know, I'm in London. What are you doing? I said, there's something here. You know, I have an invitation here, invitation here, all over in those places. And then he says, when are you going to Lagos? I said, I will soon go. He said, because if you are not there, there's no retreat. And I said, what? What's the meaning of that? If you are not there, there's no retreat. No, Jesus is there. If you are not there, no retreat. Holy Ghost is there. If you are not there, there's no retreat. All our camp commandants and all our overseers and pastors are there. If you are not, not there, there's no retreat. And the promises of God and the power of the Holy Ghost is there. But if you are not there, there's no retreat. Who gave us this kind of impression? Why can't we say, by the grace of God, we have got something. And this thing we have got, we're going to make use of it. And when you are there, my brother, my sister, there's retreat already. I said there's retreat already. The preachers, you know, we have thousands of thousands of preachers sitting down there. You can, you can preach. And then in all the various regions, in all the various states, these preachers, we can preach. And because we can preach, we're going to begin to preach in Jesus' name. Now, coming back to my question, now that she know that you are there, you are there, you are there, and by the grace of God, since you are there, there's going to be a kind of breakthrough and revival, bringing many souls into the kingdom. But when are we going to start? Will you start today? I said, will you start today? Start right there where you are. At the end of the retreat, anybody you grab, oh my friend, my brother, my sister, what's your name? You came to, are you a first time? No, I've been coming for many years. What did you get? What did you pray about? And fire him up to go and evangelize. You are the boss. And while you are the boss, not just clapping and singing, suspend all that. Let somebody rise up there and take your note and just rattle it out to all the people there. Let somebody there say, if you are there, you are coming for the retreat. You are not born again yet. I want to tell you this, the word of the Lord. Let a preacher rise up in that boat. While you are going in the car, if you are going to get it started now and then while somebody is driving, all the others are discussing, what did you get there? What conviction did you have? What decision did you make? And let the gospel be going out in every car, in every bus, and everywhere we go, in the deeper life uh, buses, as we are driving here, as we are driving, the newcomers are there, and the invitees are there, and the old timers are there, and some of the preachers are there too. Let somebody rise up and give us the word, and lead us into commitment, into conviction, and all the, you know, singing of choruses, you, you know, all these uh, Christian people, religious people, as they are coming from their convention, and they are coming from their retreat, and they are coming from their conference, all the do is singing all they do is clapping let somebody tell us that we have sung enough all those songs are enough now it is time for preaching this coming year will be a year of preaching a year of the proclamation of the gospel of the lord jesus christ and everywhere souls are getting saved in the car somebody is getting saved in the train somebody is getting saved in the boat somebody is getting saved in the bus somebody is getting saved anywhere we are somebody is getting saved because the spirit of the conqueror has now come upon our lives it's upon your life it's upon your life you rise up and do something point number three is the comforter and his penetrating wisdom the comforter and his penetrating wisdom we're looking at john john chapter 14. john chapter 14 i'm reading there from verse 15. the comforter has come already and when the comforter comes upon your life gives you wisdom to proclaim the word and to preach the word john chapter 14 verse 15 if you love me, keep my commandments. His commandment is go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. If you love me, keep my commandments, suspend the things I have not commanded, and then bring to the forefront what I have commanded. And then it says in verse, in verse 16, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. That he may abide with you forever. For how long will the comforter be with us? Forever. That means every moment. That means every day. That means every time. That the comforter is right there. And he's saying, I'm giving and praying to the Father. And as I pray to the Father, he will give unto you 
another comforter. And that comforter, when he comes, what will lead you? Look at verse 26. In chapter 14, verse 26, it tells us what that comforter will do. When he comes, it says in verse 26, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you. Chapter 15. In chapter 15 of John, chapter 15, verse 26. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. He, the Holy Ghost, will testify, will testify of me. Then verse 27, and ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. When the Holy Ghost comes, that's what he does. That's what he does. He makes you to bear witness. There will be no fear in your heart. There will be no timidity in your heart. Then you are going to rise up in the bus on the street, at the bus stop, anywhere you are. Anywhere there's a living soul. Even if he is born again, don't assume. Is, are you born again? He says, yes, I'm born again. Don't, don't just leave him because he said, I'm born again. Tell me your testimony. How did you get born again? If he's slow, tell him your own testimony. I said, this is how I came to the Lord. I just realized I was a sinner. And then the conviction came upon me. And then I realized, just turned over a new leaf and going to church and doing this and that couldn't save me. And then I realized that Jesus Christ died for me on the cross of Calvary. And then I repented and turned away from all my sins. And I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm telling the peace and the joy and the assurance and the certainty that came to my life. And my life turned around. Things changed completely. That's how I know I'm saved. And then you say, tell me your own now. And then if he's not able to tell you clearly, then you tell him what he will do. Realize you're a sinner. You cannot save yourself. Jesus died for you. Repent of your sin and come to the Lord Jesus Christ right now. Salvation will take place right there. And then in this coming year on the street, salvation. In the church building, salvation. In the bus, salvation. On the train, salvation. In the airplane, you're sitting with somebody in the airplane. You're witnessing to that person quietly there. There will be salvation there. Everywhere we go in this nation, everywhere we go in this continent, anywhere we go in this world, during this coming year, starting from this afternoon, there will be preaching everywhere. There will be salvation everywhere. There will be repentance everywhere. And the Lord Jesus Christ will be following you up with signs and wonders in Jesus' name. Do have any candidate there, any candidate there, any candidate ready there that the signs and wonders will follow you. And that you're going to go out to preach the word of God. Why don't you stand up and say, Lord, here am I, I will do it. Here am I, I will do it. Anywhere we are, anywhere we go, anywhere we find ourselves, the Lord is calling us and the Lord is saying, this is what you do. Is the commission for the whole church. It's a commission for the whole church. It's a commission for all the believers. Everybody rise up now and talk to the Lord and say, Lord, I've had your word. I'm going to abandon that which you have not commanded. I'm, not, I'm going to put aside that which you have not commanded and that which you have commanded. That which you have commanded. I'm going to give my heart, my life into it. Go into all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and his baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And in this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name, in my name, in my name, they will cast out devils. In my name, he says, in my name, they lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Tell them, tell them, tell them that Jesus died for sinful men. Go and tell them. Go and tell them. Go and tell them. Let that be your assignment every day. Don't wait for Sunday. Don't wait for Saturday. Don't wait for the month ending. And don't wait for just a special time. It's the duty, it's the responsibility of every day. Go out and do it. Go out and do it. From this afternoon, from this morning, go and tell them. Go and tell them. Abandon that which God has not commanded. Don't let the good thing stop the better thing. Salvation. 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 Telling people of their lost condition 
and telling them how they can come out of that lost condition. Let the fire burn in your soul. Let the desire, the passion rise in your heart. I give your heart, I give your life, give your resources to doing what the Lord has commanded. Evangelism. Not what you want, what she commands. Tell everybody around you, Jesus died for sinful men. Jesus died for sinful men. Go and tell them. Go and tell them. Go and tell them. Be a witness. Be a preacher. Be a soul winner. Go ye to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. All the world. All the world. All the world. It's not a commandment for one man. It's not a commission for one man. It's a commission, a commandment, a call for everyone, for you in particular. You've got the power already. You've got the anointing already. You've got the weapon already. You have the Holy Ghost already. Don't be among the people who say, Lord, give me, give me, give me, give me this, give me this, give me this, give me this again. You've got enough. Now go and make use of what you've got and go tell the people that Jesus died for sinful men. Show the people around you. Tell the people around you what it means to be saved. This is your number one job. Number one assignment. Number one duty, go in this your strength. If you have been emphasizing on important, on essential things, come to conviction, come to understanding. Get involved with what matters for eternity. Go and preach the gospel to every creature. Everybody go and tell them, go and tell them, Jesus died for sinful men. Go and tell them, go and tell them, he is coming. He is coming.